Hey guys, Dan the Wolfman here for ProMMAnow.com with Frank Shamrock. How's it going, sir? Oh yeah, pretty darn good, I gotta say. All right, we're here at Bellator. What are you doing here, checking out the fights? And yeah, I just came with some friends and we're hanging out and having a good time watching the action. Yeah. What do you think now that uh, with the Strike Force finale and uh, what, what do you think about all that? What's going on? You know, I think it's a, a confusing time for MMA, but I see definitive growth in the future. And you know, Showtime's made a commitment to mixed martial arts, so. You know, I think the sky's the limit. We just got to find the right formula and get back in the game. So you th you th you're going to be involved on the Showtime side still and whatever whatever they pick up, and they're looking at different options right now, right? Unless they fire me, I'm pretty much <laughs> I'm pretty certain I'm involved. Yeah, I mean, you know, we feel like we're part of the Showtime family, and we've, we've done a lot for mixed martial arts. So we're just waiting for the next show to come aboard and really, you know, find the next competitive player in the space. UFC announced their list now, so they, they're taking out quite a few guys from... Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, quite a few guys that can make a lot of waves over there. Yeah, I mean, DC, they, the, the truth is they bought the, they bought the brand for the talent. And, then, you know, that's great because we gave them the talent. The talent's going to do really well. You're going to see Strike Force talent do ex exceptionally well in the UFC brand. And, hey, you know, everybody wins in that deal. We go back a long time, huh? Yeah, we've been a few years, right? I think it was like 98, 99 we started talking, 2000. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ultimate Athlete, the first show in like yeah. Indiana or something. Yeah, it's been uh, a long time. I don't know if you remember this. I remember this is one of my earliest Frank Shamrock memories. Is One day you just happened to call me up, and I had just gotten the Dreamcast demo for the first UFC Dreamcast game. And you were telling me how to do your cool ass moves, like the like scissor takedown. I think it was. You were telling me how to do that for Dreamcast. Yeah, that was uh, that was a special game because the Japanese crew that was hired to make the game was the old Pancrest crew. So they loved me and wanted me to be the greatest fighter in the game, and they made a wonderful game that was, I think, at the time the pinnacle of, of mixed martial arts games. Now that you bring up Pancrest, and since I was lucky enough to fight fight once against uh, Yuki Kondo. Um, I always kind of thought now there's maybe a niche, and I got an idea for you know open hand fights, more catch wrestling, kind of the flash of the pro wrestling, but real yeah. fights. What you know? What do you think something like that would go over? I like the open hand fights and the, and the real submission game, the art of it. Yeah, I, I mean I think there's an audience for it for certain. Um, there's definitely an audience that is very interested in the story play of combative martial arts, both short term and long term. So I definitely think there's an audience out there. But you know the audience has changed. It's younger. It's it, they're very interested in. You know, cage fighting, ass kicking. I mean, there's a whole new sort of vibe going on. Yeah, but like, yeah, you know, like, I mean, you, T, you and TK, I think it was, and like Tamora was in there with you. Did you fight Tamora? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah so yeah. those were like two classic battles. We learned a lot about submission, flow, and game, and defense, and you know, I love that stuff. And we still talk about that on like different forums and stuff, catch wrestling and whatnot. Yeah, I mean, it was the foundation to most of these fighting styles. If you look at them now, I mean, Guy Mesger, Ken Shamrock, myself, Boss Root, and we all came from a. You know, mixed bank race type style, then we turn that into an MMA type style. And, yeah, so the background obviously works. I think it would be a good thing for up and coming sure. fighters if there was an organization like that. It even would maybe get around uh, the commission. You'd still be safe and everything, but it'd be a different sport than MMA itself, you know, and uh, hey, talk show time in and out. Well, I think what we've proven with with the UFC, with WEC, with Strike Force, with Elite XC, with all the brands I've been a part of launching and bringing onto networks, I think we've proven that there's a there's an audience for combative sports and regardless of the genre it can be in a cage it can be in a ring it can be kickboxing whatever there's an audience that is there for the interested storytelling of combative sports and as long as we stick to that and we put the athletes on top we tell great stories that support their journey i don't think we can lose in this industry after all your success now and everything that's going on i, I want to ask you a little bit about your autobiography if you okay, don't mind yeah. what, what made you come out and be so i mean i haven't read it but i've read excerpts you know, so open about everything in your history and, and, and why was the time right now and, and, you know, what motivated you to do that? Yeah, I mean, I always knew I'd write the book and I always knew that when I wrote the book, it, I'd hoped it'd be something important because I was a big proponent of reading and educating myself and, and staying involved in reading and books. So when I wrote the book, I, you know, I, I honestly, I wrote it to be a regular autobiography and then as I got deeper and deeper in the book, I realized that there was a there was a compelling reason for me to be really honest and to share my journey to help other people on that journey. So, you know, I could have wrote a fluff book and I could have, you know, did I this and I could have did that. this and did that. And But I realized as I started reading it that, you know, as a young boy, I wanted to read that book. I was looking for the book of the guy who grew up on welfare, who had nothing, who saw a chance and was like, I'm never going to give up. And I was looking for that book of the guy who stumbled and fell and made it up and down and was successful and not. So when I started writing my book, I realized, oh, my God, I got to write that book. And I did.
And I'm sure that eventually, as it gets out there more and more, you're going to have some kids coming out to you say, hey, it really helps to hear about someone else that went through all these turmoils and stuff and, and, and tribulations and, and make something of themselves. Yeah, kids to adults, have, we've just been, been getting tremendous response. And even battered women and just people in uncomfortable communities where they don't have a voice, we're getting tremendous response. And, you know, I mean, all this started because I was just honest. You know, my life was X. That's what it was. And tell it. And then, you know, we turned it into Y. And then we found some tools to get there. And that, I think, is the most powerful part of the book is we have a few tools that will help you, regardless of your situation, get from wherever the heck you are to wherever the heck you want to be. Uh, where can people pick up the book? Amazon.com, FrankShamrock.com. It's all over bookstores nationwide. And, you know, you know how we do it. Thanks, Frank. <laughs> nice catching up with you. Yes, sir. All right.